All right, so hello, visionaries. I'm really excited about this experience we're gonna have today. I've invited one of my beautiful clients and just amazing um, inspirations, Pam December. And she is gonna just share about her journey through the Four Radical Transformation course and how, you know, that perhaps has changed her life or enhanced her life or all of her ahas or whatever she actually wants to share. <laughs> so I'm just going to hand it off to you, um, Pam, and, you know, just share a little bit about how you were brought to, to human de design, why you were interested in the four radical transformations and a little about your journey. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I've been, I guess, in human design for, well, three years now, but when I came to the four radical transformations I've just been over two. I had a coach introduce me to human design and it was immediately, oh my goodness, this, this is amazing. This explains so much of my experience up to that point as a highly sensitive person and very empath empathic <laughs> um, and seeing yeah, just how much openness I have and uh, learning how to work with that uh, versus being uh, reactive, I guess, to, to the energies. So, um, and that's, and that same coach is really who uh, had brought PHS uh, to the forefront for me. And so it was something that I tried to find information on, on my own um, through Google and other, um, I guess, sources like Facebook and, and Instagram and whatnot. Uh, but just not really finding the depth that I needed as a, I'm a 5-1 generator. So that first line, I really wanted to investigate deep. And then Raquel started talking about the four radical transformations. And it was just a, a huge, uh-huh, uh, I need to be a part of this. Ah, I know there's really not that much out there on the four radical transformations. And I think a lot of that is because the founder, Ra Uruhu, was kind of like the last thing he put together before his trans, or one of the last, more, you know, towards the end of his life before he transitioned. So there isn't a lot of information and there's not a lot of experimentation with it. So I really feel like all of us are, you know, on the leading edge and, um, and we're the ones who are experimenting with it and really trying it on and seeing what's going to work, what's not going to work and how to bring it out to our clients, our families, our friends, our communities. And it's a really interesting process. It's really interesting for me. Um, and so as you, they say in the four radical transformations that you have to live correctly, you have to eat correctly. And then all of a sudden you can see correctly and then you're motivated correctly and it kind of goes through that progression and then your tones begin to kind of pop but for me it's really just been sort of this you know slow process of my spleen saying okay i'm ready for this okay you know let's try this and then feeling into it more and more realizing i'm becoming more and more of a freak to the rest of the world but hey <laughs> i'm an individual so yeah. but tell me about your journey through it yeah, well, I have to say, like, first, like, what you're offering is is really unique. Um, because, yeah, if you do an internet search or any of that, like, you get a little bit of a piecemeal of this and that. But it's really hard to put all the layers together, where, like, being in your program and diving deep with within the container with a number of other um, women was just really, um, it just brought it down to a different level. Like you're just able to, because you could feel everybody's transformation as we went through it. And like when you get that stuff, like on that cellular level, um, like it's, it's, it is, it's just life-changing. So um, more around like the, 
some of the controversy that's come out of CrossFit, I guess. Oh yeah, please. I've, I, I've been wanting to talk about this. I've been okay. really wanting to talk about the controversy. So yes, have at it. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's been interesting with uh, being in the human design community for a number of years now. Um, they, there's a, been some controversy coming up around uh, the four radical transformations and PHS. And, and I, it kind of saddens me because there's real value in, in this information, in this intel. And I, I feel that the people that are maybe um, don't feel aligned to this information, it's because they haven't experienced it in this, in this deep way um, like your program offers, Raquel. Yeah, that, you know, I agree with you. Um, so I'm going to share a little of the controversy that I've heard. And then you can tell me if this is, you know, what you've heard is that first, my first teacher said he didn't believe at all in BG5 or the PHS or for radical transformations. He said, you know, Ra kind of went off on his own thing and he, he didn't, he didn't believe any of it. And then I started listening to some people that were really having major transformations on it. So that's when my spleen was like, no, you want to learn more about it. So, you know, you don't want to just take what, what somebody's saying. But then I saw another, I've seen a lot of videos recently with people canceling human design or breaking up with human design or, and I think a lot of that has to do with the tribal rules that are coming down on the Jovian and people putting the tribal stamp on like, well, once you're certified, then you can only talk about this and you can only do that, which goes against your own inner authority of being able to be your own empowerment, your own guide. And then I saw someone come out and, you know, someone that I respected sent it to me and she said she was going to stop teaching all of the four radical transformations because it didn't, it wasn't based in, according to her, it wasn't based in um, the I Ching, the Kabbalah, the chakra system or the tree of life or anything. So she said, you know, she thinks Ra made it up during a time when Jovian was lacking funds and he just like made this stuff up. And I thought, okay, that's really interesting. You know, changed my whole life for this. And then, but you know, my whole, and with Ra too, like everything he talked about, he needed to firsthand experiment with an experience. And so I don't know how anybody could have experimented with the four radical transformations and, and had an ex, their own personal experience and then said, this stuff is BS. So unless you just learned it by the book, then your mind can say yes or no. But if you really try it on and your body is having a visceral experience for me, particularly with view and motivation and determination, um, and environment. Well, exactly. And, and I think if anybody uh, has any skepticism about it, like to go through it, um, like the way that we did in your program, there, there's no way that there isn't truth to it. Um, whether it was brought out, if, if integrity or not. Right. This is important information. Like, um, for example, like my determination is uh, open, color two. And so just learning to limit what I take in at a time, um, which has really helped with deconditioning from that manifesting generator <laughs> energy and just being a generator. Um, just that, and then um, with the environment, uh, I don't know if you noticed, like with my cave, I am caves environment. And just approaching things that way and making sure that I get that cave environment to really um, refill my tank. And just to, because that safety and security is important in, in that cave's environment too, right? So. Yeah, I agree. I think that it is important. And I think that the most, the way to learn it is by n just really trying it on in the way that's going to work for you. You know, I'm really dealing with my um, 
some issues in my body recently. I've not been feeling great, but I am not feeling great. So I've been doing a ton of stuff and everyone you talk to, it's always going to say, you know, eat your breakfast and, you know, and, and don't eat at night. And so literally just today I was reading this book and this guy laid out this whole breakfast plan. And I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to try and eat breakfast because my, my diet is deter is indirect, which means like, I can't, I'm not supposed to eat during the day basically, or in light, but really it's eat at night. And my whole thing is you just got to try it on and experiment with it. And I ate breakfast this morning and I literally feel so horrible this whole day. Like, and I, I was really at this point where I was like, I don't know. I definitely know the sleeping. I definitely know the nighttime. I'm alive at night. That's been my whole life. There's no denying that. But the eating, I don't know, you know, but now I got it today. I'm still feeling sick and it's, it's already three o'clock. So I agree. You have to try it on and you have to do it slowly. It's a huge life change. So you really have to try it on slowly and experiment. And one of the beautiful things about this group is that everybody was so willing to go so deep and to really try it on and feel into it and experiment with it. And I agree, everybody who went through a transformation, they provided such an incredible aha for the group. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's one of the things that was really interesting about this, this journey was um, it really reminds me of some of the other work that I do with um, 13 Moon Mystery School and how the journey is very much a spiral. And so we have the opportunity to revisit the material as we go through it and just go that, that layer deeper each time because it is, it is, it's a process and it's an experiment. And with um, so many other people, yeah, willing to be vulnerable, willing to go deep. Uh, it just gives you uh, other ways of seeing things because we all have our unique view, <laughs> our unique motivation, um, which just, it just adds to the experience so much. Like I can't say enough about that. So. And what about view? Yeah. So talk a little bit about, about view and motivation and even some of your observations because you have the most powerful observations. Oh, thank you. I've really ever witnessed. I mean, you really, it was, it was just so fun to get to know you, I have to say. Um, you. Like this is the first, first time that we've really spent a lot of time together, I guess, right? Um, yeah. You know, and yeah. yeah. Just... And, and, it, and, you know, the beauty, it's like, there's just such a softness, but subtlety, but like you have such a direct um, uh, way of understanding the material. Mm. It's like that five one and it's just this like sacral, it's direct, it's very direct. It's not necessarily in the same way that when I'm dealing with a um, projector, but you have such an incredible way that you that you um, bring in the information and then you teach it. You know, that's part of being the teacher and the curiosity, right? There's such a depth of the curiosity. And so I watch you take it to places and have ahas that were really stunning. Um, so yeah, so I would love to, for you to share anything about view, motivation or anything yeah. that you kind of, any ahas you had as well. Well, thank you so much for that. I don't know if I'll be able to leave the room. My head might be a little swollen. <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah. And you, and I, and I think that you're so humble. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. So yeah, with you, um, all of this is just, has been so affirming, like all of human design, right. And this layer too. So in I'm personal view and that tends to be, so it's the color six that tends to be um, viewed as a narcissistic type of view because everything goes through your personal lens. And uh, in the past, I, was, I have questioned myself, like, am I a narcissist? Because like so much of my contemplation and everything has to do with me. It does have to do with the greater 
world and everything else too. But it first comes through through how uh, I my experience. Um, so it was yeah really affirming that that's completely completely normal and no you're not a narcissist. Uh, it's actually yeah it, the personal view brings value to the, uh, the outer world right so. <laughs> Um, yeah, and how that plays into to motivation. And you were speaking about like the, the curiosity and how we landed on fear, the fear motivation of color one, of uh, that being more about the curiosity um, rather than actual the fear that, uh, like the instinctual fear that, um, well, really so many of us are experiencing right now with with the upheaval that we're experiencing going into 2027, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, it's the good type of narcissism. I'd like to think so, because really, like, I love people and I love, yeah, I have the gate 50 and the love of humanity. And that's the only gate off of my G center. And it's absolutely true. I, I, I love people and I want the best for everybody. Um, but it is going to come through my lens before um, before it comes out the rest of the world. Yeah, and I think it is a good way to review the narcissism because narcissism is a huge catchphrase right now. It's something we're all seeing and and witnessing and and trying to digest, particularly with our last president. Not to get political, mm -hmm. but we saw so much narcissism and it really got a bad rap. And so with the personal view, which is mine also, it really is, I question that too. You know, I really questioned if I was a narcissist and um, that I, and even as a projector, they would say, oh, you know, you're here for the other and you got to put your chart away and just learn the other. And so really going this level deeper really helped to affirm all of these things you're experiencing. I mean, there's just no way that if you experiment with that, you're not going to get these huge ahas. I mean, this is something that my whole life I've been dealing with. I felt like a narcissist that I was processing everything through myself. And, you know, had I known this earlier, then I wouldn't, then I would have been in the healthy narcissism and not the projecting out comparing, which is, you know, where the, where the transference comes in or the distraction mm -hmm. in view, which for us is power, which is basically just this sense of, you know, seeing other people. And instead of just your own personal experience in life, you're comparing and that really does take me out of my business. Anytime I'm, I'm seeing anybody else's business or, oh, I should do it this, you know, oh, I need to have this funnel and I need to do this, whatever's going on with the next business thing, you know, it takes me out of my own personal journey. And so, I, and I also think with motivation, if I had only known my motivation when I, you know, anytime sooner than when I found out about it, it would have changed the game for me. It would have changed my whole life. And so, you know, for everybody who is doubting it, I agree. It's really, you got to just experiment with it. Um, and yeah, Ra was a very flawed character. You know, he was a flawed character and he did some things probably like that maybe if we really knew all that he did, we would maybe be horrified. I mean, I don't know. Um, but, he, but the one thing he always did say is, don't believe me, just experiment with it, yeah. you know? Well, that's the other thing. He's a fifth line as well, right? So, you know, that projection field as fifth lines is, is a powerful thing. And I think you, you're onto something with regards to, yeah, the breakdown of, of tribal circuitry and what's happening with, with Jovian, so... Yeah, you can't control this. I mean, you give it people their certification and then you say you can only use it in this way. Well, guess what? That's just not going to fly when the material is here to be mutated. And Raw actually knew that the material is here to be mutated. Yeah. So, you know, with the four radical transformations, the way, you know, I think it's important to bring it out is very personal. And you know, will it solve all of your problems in life? Probably not. But will it address a lot of things if you try it on? Yeah. Yeah, it will. 
well, that's just it. Like, cause this is an experiment and like our class is done, but we'll be continuing to experiment. Um, cause yeah, like the motivation, uh, I'm still processing that still integrating everything that we learned on that. Uh, but I know that my transference of need, I recognize that right away. So that's kind of where, yeah, I'll switch my focus when I go to, to pursue anything. It's like, oh, where's the motivation coming from? Is it need? No, it's not. Okay, I'm good then. <laughs> but if it's need, then it's like, okay, that, now do I really need to be doing this? Like, is this where I really want to put my energy, my focus, right? <laughs> right. And then once you know that motivation, then you can integrate it with the sacral and you can really integrate it with, you know, okay, that, you know, how the sacral is, is responding. And the motivation gives you that extra insight and that extra ability to see where you're underwater and where you're kind of taken by the not self. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, because yeah, it's, it's so layered and I don't know. Yeah. Like if we necessarily have to learn it all in the same order or not, but I think it is a matter of revisiting each piece, uh, even with the basics of human design, like there, you can't possibly pick everything up the first time that you experience it or read it or, or whatnot. Like, um, I think any of us have experienced that where you, you, you pick up a book and you read it and it's like, Oh, I, I don't remember reading this at all. It's just because you didn't have the space to, to hold that at the time. It happens to me every year, you know, <laughs> every year I go the next layer. I'm like, oh my God, you know, even just what, um, with Davidian's new mental projector video he did. And, and then after he spent all this time, we did a lot of contemplation. This new group has, we have two mental projectors, which I haven't had a mental projector in my class for this, you know, for a while. And um, so now I have an entirely new perspective of the mental projector. You know, there's so many complexities and we're all so different. And, you know, if you, you know, if you're doing any type of coaching or anything, you, yes, you're going to learn your own first because that's the one you're going to have a haas. And then as you're working with people and you're seeing how people, your, your family, your kids, you're seeing it in action then you're going to go, oh my God, you're going to witness it. And then there's, and then again, you're going to have the next layer of that, right? So it's constantly like these experiential, like ahas with it and layers. Um, I love that you brought up the mental projector part because that's um, something for myself on my design side, I'm a mental projector. And on my mind side, I'm a mental projector. But when the two charts come together, I'm, I'm a sacral generator. Um, so just knowing that piece that that's part of the sensitivity that my body feels, that's part of the reason why it needs the right environment, uh, much like a, a true mental projector or somebody with an open G might need. Um, and then knowing that to lean into my cognition of outer vision, while making those sacral or leading into the sacral response, right? Um, as as something to, instead of making those decisions from the mind or or feeling like I need to talk everything out <laughs> like a mental projector. Right. You know, that's interesting that you reminded me of that. I forgot about your design and your personality. Mm -hmm of the mental projector, because we haven't looked at that in a while. And as we were beginning this conversation, I was, was feeling that insight. You really have that intense insight, very similar to the feeling of a mental projector when you're sharing. So that is really interesting. It is a part of you. Uh, it's a part of you, not necessarily how you make decisions, but it's a big part of you. And so, yeah, we're complex. We have all these pieces coming together and it is really fascinating, the layers, how those layers start to unfold. And here's another really fun example is, you know, this is exactly what, what happens oftentimes in our class. It's like someone will bring something up or we'll be studying a specific thing. And then all of a sudden someone's life will reflect whatever they've got going on in their life, what's happening. 
And that is really based on the intention of the experiential journey. When you really have a group willing to be courageous enough to take on the experiment, things like that start to show up. You know, when we really start to like have these experiential journeys as opposed to just, okay, let's open the book and kind of what's the next chapter? You know, it's like life kind of has these ahas. And so that's another really fun one. And by the way, you should watch Davidian's Mental Projector video if you haven't seen it, because he has some new insights on there that I thought were really, really great um, in the contemplation. So yeah, I watched it and I, I really enjoyed it. Oh, you did. I'm passing it on to my mom. She's because it is for the open G as well. When it, he talks a lot about environment, right? And uh, my mother, yeah, has an open G center. So, um, oh, so I don't know. The more all of us can know about ourselves, it's just you can have so much more self compassion for yourself, so much more forgiveness, and so much more healing in in doing this work. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so much more wisdom for your kids, you know, I mean, I really think that's so huge. Yes, no, exactly. I, I, I wish I had found human design when my daughter was younger, but all in divine timing. Yeah. And um, it's been great to because she's a, a three five manifesting generator. Oh. It's been great to uh, explain to her or when she has those failures as a third line um just to like this is part of your part of your trial and error like it's not a mistake it's just you're figuring out what's not working for you uh, and just yeah keep experimenting so so i want to have a quick um just seeding of this next layer um just for fun is because I know you're you're as excited as I am about this new next layer of the rave cosmology and we're both investigators so we and we're very serious investigators I noticed that when we get onto something we go super deep I noticed that with you and it, it's the same with me um when I get into something it's like I just I can't get the su superficial surface level yeah. So this next level that's coming is uh, really interesting because as you go through the human design rabbit hole, there's layers upon layers upon layers. And then, of course, we get to after you finish motivation, um, according to Ra, when you're living in your proper motivation, what then happens is you open yourself up to what he calls encounters, which is basically like opening yourself up to the other world and to these other worldly experiences. And so just when you thought you're going to the bottom, it like all of a sudden takes like not only like another rabbit hole, but like a black hole where you're going into like another universe and then sort of brings together all of these universal spiritual elements that really are my background, my entire history is based in these spiritual awakenings and experiences. So um, I'm really excited to go to that next level and kind of share it with you. And I know you've sort of touched on it a little bit. Um, yeah. That, yeah, that's going to be, I'm, I'm super excited for it because it's something that, again, it's really hard to find uh, information on with the, just the Google. Um, it seems like a lot of that is behind the paywall uh, with Jovian, and which is fine, but <laughs> um, I think, yeah, like with um, having the sun in gate 61, like it's not only like the awe and wonder and mystery of an inner truth of that gate, it also has to do with the occult. And like for as long as I can remember, that has been something that I've been been highly interested in, whether it's like um, tarot and, and witchcraft and, and things like that. And in studying mediumship too, and like the encounters with, with people that way and entities that way. Um, and then, yeah, and then there's other people in my circles that, that, uh, that deal with the darker side that a lot of us don't want to acknowledge. So, uh, we're really looking forward to, yeah, diving into that with you. 
Yeah, that's exactly it. I think, you know, for me, it's really important to have bring in the spiritual side to all of it, to everything that we learn, just because that is my foundation. And um, I agree, I'm constantly feeling the pressure to know the unknown. However, sometimes I do think the unknown is knowable. I do think that my research on death and transition, there are things that you can research and discover and find out. And I think Ra has one perspective on this whole other side, and it's interesting, um, but it, it, you know, it's not the be all end all, just like human design isn't the be all end all. It's another piece to the puzzle, but you have to be able to, and what the beautiful thing is, is it teaches you to learn your, your own empowerment. So, mm -hmm. you know, exactly how to sort through the Intel. Cause just like anything, you know, Ra's message and his information, a lot of it was spot on and a lot of it wasn't. So we do need to tease apart. And I think that's really important. You can't make anybody a guru and you can't now make human design a bible because then it's really taking away what the information is teaching us which is this radical self um reliance and you know mm. completely knowing your own empowerment so um so yeah so the next journey after motivation is this you know this area of the the aliens and the the gods and the angels and the entities crazy it's gonna be interesting because that's the thing there are you can find people out there that that are very much every day it's part of their lives interacting with these entities right um so yeah really looking forward to that's to the thing rock. again it, yeah that's the thing about learning this stuff is there, there's so much confusion and it's really true that I do think learning it from this human design perspective will help us sort through and deal with what people are experiencing right now. I really do. I feel like it's going to be like imperative, particularly as, you know, things intensify and there's more and more confusion. And according to Ra, there's going to be more and more encounters. So you really have to know what it is you're looking at. So... When, you know, so basically it's the beginning of a new deep dive into the rabbit hole. So, so cool. Yes. Arming our, our toolkits for as we transition through 2027. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, is there anything else you feel like you want to share and let people know about your journey and about you and anything else you're bringing, how you're integrating this into your life? Hmm. Yeah, like every, I guess, because human design is just so foundational to my life now, like it's every day, it's, it's at the forefront of um, my discussions, whether yeah, with other people, like you can't have a conversation with me without me bringing up human design. So um, just a warning for anybody who might reach out. <laughs> um. Yeah, and just continuing the contemplation. Um, one of the other things that I've been paying more attention to is the transits and uh, the definitions that that creates um, and how, how those energies feel uh, as a means of deconditioning. Um, Love that. Yeah, and I always feel like people have their own specialty in human design because, you know, I know when someone talks about something that I'm like, oh, wow, that's interesting. I don't understand that as well. And transits is one of those areas for me where I know that when, you know, it's it's not my main focus because I have less, it, it, it I understand it less. So whenever I hear someone, you know, taking on these different, areas of human design it really to me means that it's an area that you know the universe is calling for you to specialize in and bring forward and talk mm -hmm. about and share with people because you know we need as many voices in this arena as possible as we are sorting through the chaos and the confusion mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um we need you know those voices and i think transits is a great great area to focus in yeah it's it's really interesting to 
to just, yeah, feel the energies and how they're different, especially like I just recently finished my Uranus opposition. I'm currently in a Pluto uh, conjunction, like the next, well, the last two years and the next two years energetically are, are pretty challenging. So um, that's been interesting. So I guess one of the other things that I'm, I'm bringing in to human design that that I feel is unique is energy healing with the expansion principle and uh, deconditioning with that because it's, especially for anybody that has an undefined or open spleen, you're holding on to so much that you don't need to. And yeah, EP, like the expansion principle is just a great energy to, to help decondition all the centers, but the spleen <laughs> I found especially important. I love energy healing. Yeah, that's so beautiful. I think that's a perfect like tool to bring into human design. Now, do you have a place that people can find you for that? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can find me uh, on Instagram or on Facebook at Mad for Purple. Uh, I also, you can check out my website, madforpurple.com. And yeah, there'll be links on how to work with me there. Or contact me. Um, of course, my, my DMs are open too. So how did I not know mad for purple? Sorry? How did I not know mad for purple? I, I think it's one of those things that, I don't know if there's a fifth line or just as an introvert, um, I don't talk about myself that much and, uh, like I'm been asked so much recently, like, what do you do? And a lot of the time when I explain what I do, people still don't, still don't get it. But I've had people approach me like, I don't know what you do, but I know I want to work with you. <laughs> That's kind of how it goes. So, um, yeah, whether it's the fifth line, yeah, projection, or like I said, just being introverted and not talking about myself enough. <laughs> yeah. Where did Mad for Purple come from? Uh, well, purple is is my favorite color. It's been my favorite color for as long as I can remember. And when I decided to get into entrepreneurship, I knew that I needed a website and I wanted purple to be involved in it. So it was a large investigation into what was available. Um, but like purple, like it's not just being a color, but like you look at like third eye, crown chakra, yeah. intuition. You can even get into like royalty and yes. the richness that that, that that color brings in, right? The vibration. So I have a purple too. I have a purple too. I love purple. Purple is like a really big part of um, our brand and my energy too. And I feel the same way. There's something about the frequency. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the, the, um, there's something about that vibration of um, moving, you know, moving up into, um, you know, those, those more, the clarity, the connection to the other world and yeah, the royalty and yeah. So I'm with you on that one. I love purple too. Yeah. So that's kind of how it was born. <laughs> well, I'm so glad to learn a little bit more about you today mm -hmm. and to connect and to hear about your journey and the amazing sort of insights that you've had and, and just you know, your experience. So I appreciate so much you taking the time today oh, to connect thank with me everybody. and to share with everybody your journey. <laughs> thank you. All right, everyone. So thank you so much for tuning in. And I will put some links in the description below Mad About Purple. So you can check out a little bit more about Pam there and more about the four radical transformations if you're interested in exploring that as well. So thanks everyone.